Hello again, welcome to another video. Haven't done one for a while, hope you're all okay. This one explains how you can use Cloud Drive services with Soundbox. So that's Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, any of those really, um, because some things have changed, as you'll see in a moment. So let's get to it. Okay, so what has changed, you may say? Well, a lot of people have noticed that when you open Soundbox now, and go to options, there's something missing here. There used to be a section about connecting to Dropbox where you could set up your account and have it automatically save the recordings there. And in settings, there was a Dropbox section that's now gone. The reason for this is that Dropbox have changed the way applications can connect to their service and Soundbox used the old way and because of the change regarding the letter that happened with the um, move to the JW library it wasn't deemed necessary to move Soundbox with the new Dropbox connection method or API as it's called it wasn't worth the effort but you may still want to use some cloud drive services such as, as you can see here, I've got all three of them installed so I can demonstrate to them to you. We've got Google Drive, OneDrive from Microsoft and Dropbox itself. You can still use those but it's not directly built into Soundbox. So don't worry, we just have to do a little bit more manual work, that's all. Normally in Soundbox when you record a track. So let's let's record a test track now. If I click start, you can see my voice bouncing up and down on the level meter there. So it's recording me at the moment. So if I stop that, you can see that the file is going to be called Friday 14 July 2007-001. So if I stop that, then it'll fade out. Let's close Soundbox and open Explorer. And those files are normally stored in your Documents folder so this PC and then Documents. If it was an older Windows, it could be My Computer and then My Documents. But let's go to Documents. Scroll down all the way down to the S. So we've got Soundbox. This is where Soundbox stores a lot of files. This is where the background image is stored, for instance. But we're looking for the Recordings folder, which is here. So if we go into there, it now separates everything out into year and month. So there's 2017. There's 07 because it's July, and there's the date, the 14th of July, in, Ameri in American format, I think, I'm not sure. So if you click that, double click that, there's the file. And if I go to play it, click start, you can see my voice bouncing up and down on the level meter there. There's the recording. So it's recording had. me at the moment. So that's fine. All good. That's where they're stored normally. So if this is a computer at the, at the hall, that's where they would be stored. Before we go into moving and using the cloud services, there is something else happens. If you set up in Soundbox and Options and Settings, if you set up Congregations, so let's go to the Congregations, um, there's nothing in the list right now. But if we set up um, a couple of Congregations, so let's have... Oh, let's have London there and Edinburgh. Because they happen to use the same hall, very strange. And then close Soundbox. When you next open Soundbox, it'll ask you what congregation you want to go in. So if we, let's go to Edinburgh. Soundbox works as normally. But now if I go to record, sorry, and click start, you'll see it's working. And you see that's the same file number, which is strange. Surely that would overwrite the old one, but you'll see why in a moment. And click stop. Okay, so let's close Soundbox, open Explorer, go to Documents, down to Soundbox, and into Recordings. We now see another folder has appeared, Edinburgh, as in the name of the congregation. And then we go into there, and then it's the same as before. You've got 2017, 07, and then the date, and there's the file. So when you have congregations set up, it creates a folder for each congregation. So everything is kept separately. So if that's how you've got Soundbox operated, so it just asks you for each congregation, that's where they're stored. 
if you have Soundbox on different user accounts for Windows, then that doesn't apply because each um, user account will have their own documents folder instead. Um, so that's a bit different when you have it like that. But anyway, that's how it's normally stored if you use Soundbox itself to, to use different congregations. Okay, so that's how it is at the moment. And you think, well, how am I going to get those files? Save literally at the end of every meeting, having somebody come to the congregation, uh, come to the computer, drag the folder, drag the files into the relevant Dropbox folder and do it manually, which you can do, but that is a faff and what if that brother's ill or somebody forgets that's no good so what you want to do is you want to automatically synchronize them now none of these cloud services will automatically synchronize an external folder to the one they've already got set up on your computer but what you can do in soundbox is tell it to put the recording somewhere else the easiest way to do that is to change the shortcut and the easiest way to change the shortcut is to use the Soundbox Shortcut Manager. So let's do that. So if we go to here, there we go. Let's start, let's create a new shortcut and call this Edinburgh because that's why I fancy doing it. You want to make sure this advanced button is ticked because if it's not, the only options it gives you are language and congregation. Now we do want congregation Edinburgh, but we will need to click advanced. So there's congregation is still set up there. Now if you scroll down here, you'll see here recordings folder. And you can click in there and type it manually and you type it as you would a folder in the old DOS format. But the easiest way is to click the three dots here. So click that, find the folder you want. So in this instance, it will be, let's use Dropbox because that's what um, people are familiar with. So go to Dropbox. There's already a recordings folder because I've tried this before. So do that and click select that folder. You'll see now the recordings folder will be D Dropbox Recordings because that's where it is on my computer. But obviously that would be depending on how you've got the com computer set up. But And you can see what it's doing here. This is what you would change if you edited the shortcut manually by right clicking it, going to properties and then going to here and typing all that lot in. So you can still do that, but this program automates it for you. So there we go, let's click Save. And close that. You now you see there's the new shortcut it's created, Soundbox Edinburgh. So let's go into that. There we go, let's go to Record. And you'll see actually down here that the Dropbox icon suddenly went to synchronizing mode because it saw that I'd created a new folder but we'll see what that is in a minute so let's start recording and the way Soundbox works it doesn't actually save the file until the recording stops so you won't have a problem where the um, synchronizing software is constantly trying to synchronize a file that's being written to all the time um, it it won't see the new file or the new recording until Soundbox stops recording. So if I click stop, it'll fade out, save the file, and you'll now see, see Dropbox is now uploading that file. So let's see where it's put it. If I go to Explorer and Documents, now go to Soundbox and Recordings, there's Edinburgh, but it's just got the one recording I did earlier. So it's not put it there. Where it's put it is directly into the Dropbox folder. Now if I double click that to open the Dropbox folder, there's the recordings folder. Now I didn't tell it to put a folder there. It did that itself. And that's a new feature of Soundbox actually. It didn't used to do that. It didn't used to separate those congregations when you had it set like this. So you'd have all the recordings in one folder, which is a bit messy. But now it's automatically put a folder called Edinburgh. And in there, you've seen this before, the year, the month, the date, and there's the file. And that's it. That is how you set up Dropbox with Soundbox. It's the same principle for setting it with OneDrive or Google Drive. So if I come out of here and open the shortcut manager again, just because it's an easy way of doing it, go to the Edinburgh shortcut 
and this time scrolling down to recordings and click the three dots I could now tell it instead of using Dropbox I'll tell it to use Google Drive and we'll give it a new folder here called recordings select folder See now it's put it in D documents Google Drive recordings. That's where mine is on my computer. Click save. Close that. Now open this shortcut. Go to record and start recording. See it's starting a new file though, 01 again because this time it's in a different place. So it's the first file in that folder. So we know it's putting it in a different folder. And Google Drive hasn't done anything yet, it doesn't know there's any new files but if I click stop you'll see the icon start to animate as it's synchronizing I think it animates oh there you go it did it so quick you didn't even notice it so now if I close soundbox go to my Google Drive folder there's now a recordings it's automatically made a folder called Edinburgh there's the, the, the year, the month, the date, there's the file. And just repetition for emphasis, if you want to use OneDrive, again, change the shortcut by using the shortcut manager. Click the shortcut you want to change. Make sure everything else is set correctly, but go down to Recordings. This time, instead of Google Drive, we'll put it in OneDrive, which is up here. Oops. I've already got a, let's go to OneDrive and we'll call it a new folder called Soundbox this time, or Soundbox Recordings. Click Select Folder, Save, close that. Now open Soundbox and you'll see OneDrive synchronized but actually it did it so quick you didn't notice it so let's go to record oh there you go see it's synchronizing the new folder that's been created it's gone it's done it so quickly click start to start a new recording again you know it's in a new folder because it's got 001 there and we'll chat for a couple of seconds and then click stop it'll fade away and you'll see the icon down here suddenly get the there we go the two hours synchronized so let's close soundbox are you getting bored yet? <laughs> Double click OneDrive. Well, actually, you don't. You click OneDrive once and then click the folder now, the new program. We'll go to down there's Soundbox Recordings, what I just created. There's the congregation name. There's the year, there's the month, there's the date, and there's the file. Okay, that's it. That is how you use any cloud service with Soundbox. You just edit the shortcut using the shortcut manager. As, as you've seen, you can do it manually by right-clicking the shortcut, going to Properties, and then typing those options in. But as you can see, it's quite difficult to get to the right place um, with the mouse cursor. You have to click in there and then use the arrows, go one character at a time. It's, it's much easier to use the shortcut manager. I mean, this is perfectly doable, but it's, it's a bit of a faff because you can't see what what's been typed very easily um, but all the if you want to do it manually all the um, codes that you need to type in there are in the manual so just press F1 when Soundbox is open and it does explain it all in there but uh, the shortcut manager is so much easier again if you've got any questions with this please let me know in the comments down below or if you've got a serious problem that you need help with uh, please don't use the YouTube comments for that. Please go to the help desk for Soundbox by going to Soundbox and in options, clicking the help desk link, and, and we'll sure to help you on there instead. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. See you soon. Bye.